Lord be with you. I hope you're having a wonderful day on this Sunday. Welcome to this online worship service sponsored by Inman Presbyterian Church as well as Landrum Presbyterian Church in the upstate of South Carolina. My name is Reverend Beth Hoskins. Um, I'm your fearless worship leader today. If you want to see uh, lyrics to hymns, we'll be singing two hymns today. You can find those at, at the inmanpres.org website on the online worship page. We're so glad you joined us. Just a couple of things for the church folks that are listening. In terms of announcements, the only uh, big things are in Landrum. Landrum, we are collecting items for Project Hope. The September items we're collecting are essential hair items, especially for ethnic groups. In Inman, the choir is meeting on Wednesdays at, at 7 p.m. to practice some things, and we're working on how and when we'll include those in worship. Both sessions meet tomorrow. Landrum meets at 2, and Inman meets at 5. I always like to flash up this uh, prayer concerns list for members who may be watching that you might uh, take a screenshot and pray for these people uh, during the week. I know that uh, we're still playing, praying for Elaine. Maria is doing really well in Landrum, and, and, uh, but we're praying for Jeff Jr. and his wife and others in the Landrum area who are suffering from COVID. Um, also in Inman, uh, every, Mildred's doing really well, but still needs our prayer. She had that surgery on her arm. Um, Tom G is doing better, but he needs a lot of prayer. He had that major heart attack as well as the others. So um, please pray for all of these folks as well as, you know, Project Hope, Operation Hope and Landrum, Inman Car Ministry, Schools, Ida Victims in Afghanistan. Well, that's enough of that. Let's put aside the worries of the world and come before the living God to worship. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will keep you from evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Let us worship the Lord. Let us join together in song.
book of James tells us, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. With this in mind, let us confess our sins using the prayer before you and then using the time of silence afterwards to lift up our personal prayers to God. I invite you to pray with me. Creator, you have made all things good and placed us as caretakers in your beautiful creation. Help us to see where we have fallen short and bring us to full awareness and appreciation for all you have created. Forgive us for any part we have played in damaging something so precious and show us how we might make amends so you would be glorified in and through us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the good news, brothers and sisters, that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. I now invite you to think of all the things in your life for which you are truly thankful and to offer up your own prayer as we listen to this music offering by Joan Green. I also ask you to think about how you might express this thanksgiving tangibly through the giving of yourself and your things. Hear now the word of God as it comes to us 
from the Gospel of John, first chapter, first, first, first five verses. Listen for the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now the beginning of the Holy Scriptures, the beginning of the book of Genesis, the beginning of the story of God. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. The first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants and seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons, for days and for years. And let there, them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. 
to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly over the earth above, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monster and every living thing that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant-yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit you shall have them for food and every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and to every thing that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life i have given every green plant for food and it was so God saw everything he had created. And indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning. The sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work he had done and he rested. On the seventh day, from all the work he had done, so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, 
God rested from all the work he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Preaching on this text in Genesis, to me, it's kind of like trying to preach on poetry, trying to explain what it means. It's really kind of a bad idea. Part of me thinks I should simply play What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong and and sit down or, or move on. Uh, you know, the I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh yeah, skies are blue and clouds the white. The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Genesis 1 is a magnificent beginning to the story of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you don't know anything else about God in the Bible from the very beginning, you know that this God is a creator God. What did God create? Ask question seven of the children's catechism belonging to God. God created all that is, seen and unseen. On that first day, God created light and separated the light from the darkness. On the second day, God created the dome of the sky. On the third day, God gathered the seas in one place and the dry land into the earth and brought forth vegetation of every kind. On the fourth day, God created day and night, the sun and the moon and all the signs and seasons. On the fifth day, God created swarms of living things, fish and birds of every kind. And on the sixth day, God created living creatures, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of every shape and size. And God made humankind in God's own image. What does it mean that we are made in God's image? Ask question nine of the children's catechism belonging to God. Answer. It means we are made to reflect God's goodness, wisdom, and love. And on the seventh day, after all the work was finished, God rested and blessed that day, setting it apart as a holy day. Seven days of creation. Now it's important to remember as we listen to this story, that the Bible speaks in the language of faith and not in the language of science. This is very important. In the language of faith, who is to say how long one day is in the eyes of the Lord? Maybe it's a year. Maybe it's a thousand years. Maybe it's 10,000 years. The amount of time that it took God to create the world is not the point. You drive in your car from Inman towards Landrum. And there comes a place in a little town called Campobello. Where if you're looking out your, your windshield, your car window, you'll see there in the distance. Mountains, majestic and beautiful. God made that. This is the point. God created those mountains. Wow. And when God creates something, 
It is good. Somebody once said, God don't make any junk. Every day of creation, God looks over what he has made that day and sees it is good. Because God made it, we know there's good in there. There's a reflection of the creator in the, what has been created. So we know there's good in you and there's good in me. There's good in everything that God created and God created everything. Therefore, we honor all of creation and treat it with respect. The waters and the earth, the vegetation and the animals, and of course the people. All the people made in the image of God. But this is where it gets confusing. This is where we start to get a little puzzled because sometimes in the New Testament, we know that Jesus talks about the things of the world versus the things of the kingdom of God. And we know that Paul tells us not to be of this world or worldly, but to be of the spirit, that is, the spirit of the risen Lord. Let's be crystal clear on this point. The world that God created was and is good, very good. But something called sin infected it. Like a disease attacking a body or pollution corrupting a stream. The body is good. The stream is good. The disease, the pollution, that which God never intended, that is what is bad. Jesus Christ came into the world to, to bring us living water, clean, pure water, holy water of life straight from God. If someone brings you clean water, you don't mix it with the polluted water anymore. You keep it separate, pristine, of God and God's Spirit, sacred. Thus, Jesus and Paul teach about the necessity to be in the world, but not of the world, as entainted and corrupted by sin. But here in the first chapter of Genesis, everything is new and pure and innocent, like new fallen snow. There are not one muddy set of footprints yet. And so it is good, very good, which is why God will work so incredibly hard and give and sacrifice so much in later chapters, to protect and redeem this, this precious creation after sin has entered. God made all life which makes it sacred. Every blade of grass, every creature that swims or walks or flies or creeps along is sacred because God made it, including you and me, and all the other people in the world whom God has made in God's own image. There is something of God reflected in us, which is why we can show mercy and have compassion and love. It's also why I believe we love to create and express you, you can go to the poorest or most desperate place in the universe. And I guarantee you, even in that place, you're going to find somebody who's drawing or carving or writing or building something. Even the earliest cavemen took berries and colored dirt and drew figures on the walls. Why? Because they couldn't help themselves? Because they were children of the God who created them. A God who expresses through creating things. And there will be art. We can't help but create because 
We are made in God's likeness and our God is a creating God. And this creating God says to us, his creatures, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, fill the earth, he says, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and the birds and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And this, my friends, is where we can get into serious trouble. There is great misunderstanding about these words. So great a misunderstanding, it has even threatened the future of our planet. It's a theological misunderstanding. And it all centers around what does it mean when God tells us here in Genesis 1 to subdue the earth and have dominion over it? This is the important theological question for our time, or at least one of them. Well, here's what I would say about that. I think there is a difference between going out in your backyard and planting and cultivating a garden. Boy, that is hard, hard work. Plowing the ground and getting it ready and removing all the trees and roots and rocks and, and getting the soil soft and ready and putting the seed in there and watering it and fertilizing it and keeping the bugs out of it and the deer away from it and, and, and rabbits and, and, and when it's time picking it and putting it up to use in winter. It is hard work subduing the earth and having dominion over it. But this example that I've, I've lifted up, surely you can see the difference between that and clear-cutting thousands and thousands of acres in the Brazilian rainforest so that the entire planet is threatened. Surely we can see the difference between those two things. The world to which the author of Genesis spoke to which it speaks, is, is so different than ours with our technology and our equipment. And even in our own garden, we can be mindful of what chemicals we are using so that we are sure we're not hurting the soil. We want things to grow afterwards. Or we're not hurting other unintended creatures or creatures down the line in the ecosystem, which eventually, you know, always gets to us or our water supply. This is to say that when God gives us dominion, I firmly believe it is meant in the attitude and the manner as you give someone dominion over a nursery. It is to ask them to rule over it in a manner uh, that protects these precious, precious ones in an environment that they are loved and can thrive. I believe uh, here in Genesis, God is telling us to use our intelligence and our power to watch over and protect what has been given over to our care. We can't turn away from that sacred duty. It is God himself who has given it to us. And however we do it, however we take care of this precious planet, we, we need to be about honoring our God as we do it. Genesis 1 makes it crystal clear that God created us and the world together. We're part of each other. We, we need each other to survive and thrive. And the gift is so very precious. This gift of creation this gift of life 
from God who made all things good. Today, in honor of Genesis 1, I suggest that you do some, some homework. I don't usually give homework, but I'm giving you a homework assignment. Today or this week, I hope that you will will take time to notice something in creation. I don't care what it is. It can be anything. Plant, animal, season, stars, astral body. I don't care what it is, but take, notice something in creation. And take time to study it. To really, really look at it and see how beautiful it is. How marvelous and complex. And as you're doing that, notice how much closer you feel to God by the existence of this beautiful, marvelous thing. And as you wonder, give thanks to God who created it. Wonder and give thanks for this one small part of an entire universe of magnificent goodness created by the God who loves you. And let that sink into your soul and your life and give thanks in the name of your God, creator, redeemer, and life giver. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we come before you in wonder and awe of all this magnificence around us that you have created. We are so blessed to live in a place full of green, green, green all around and flowers and birds and creatures of all kinds that give us comfort. Oh Lord, we thank you for the bounty of the earth that sustains us, that gives us food, that gives us water, that gives us the resources to build the things that we love the things that shelter us, the things that drive us from place to place, the screens that we look at for communication and entertainment. All of these things we know, great God, come from the good earth. And we thank you for all of those resources and the intelligence and the strength and the will that came together to create those things. Oh Lord, we also take time to pray for your creation. It's come to our awareness, especially in the last decade or so, that some of the things that we have done have come together to perhaps harm your creation. Help us to know what to do about it. Help us to have courage and to work together and to have a sense of compassion for this creation you have given us that we might make amends, that we might help heal that which has been harmed. Oh Lord, bless us to know what to do, to be partners and not enemies with the good earth. Lord, we also pray for our brothers and sisters who are at battle with themselves. Their body has been invaded by some pathogen like COVID or cancer or has been broken in some manner. And we pray for their healing. And we pray for those who practice the art of healing that you would use their gifts to help them. We also pray for our church 
that you would help us to love each other and to lift each other up and to be a blessing. Uh, that as we live and work and love together, that the world will see and you will be glorified in all that we do and say. Lord God, we lift all of these prayers to you in the strong and sure name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the uh, creed known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join in a closing hymn together. This is my Father's world. bless you and keep you this day my friends may you go out and the be surrounded by the wonder of creation and the love of god and as you go know that the grace of your lord jesus christ and the love of god your father and the fellowship of the holy spirit goes with you this day and every day amen